Investing in reptiles could be either very lucrative or it could leave you broke. Knowing when to invest in a project and when to pull out or hold off is super important. And in this video, we're gonna show you guys some of the best and absolute worst reptile investments you can make right now. So one of the best gecko investments you could make right now are going to be the gargoyle geckos. These guys were a really, really high price in the last three years. Now they're starting to regulate, but with the new discovery of different morphs like the amelanistic, the clown project, you wanna get in right now because this is when it starts to go up and it's gonna stay up because of the, how popular crested geckos have become. This is the next best thing. This is like crested geckos are the gateway drug and then gargoyle geckos are like the second step to that. So as more people start to discover the crested geckos, they're gonna start getting into gargoyle geckos and with the explosion of all the new moors that are coming out that we already know of a couple that are behind the scenes, that's gonna bring the value of these animals even higher. Before investing a large amount of money into any animal, it is very important to pay attention to the market. For example, tegus and iguanas. There's a lot of people who dumped thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars into these animals only for it a couple years later for them to be banned. Now they got banned in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and that caused their value to crash because all these people had to get rid of their animals. Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, that's where most of these outdoor breeders were. The reason why is because we can keep them outside in Florida. We can keep them outside almost all year round. So we kept and bred tegus outside. That's where the majority were living in. And then when they got banned, everyone had to get rid of their things at the same time, causing a flood in the market. So it is very important to pay attention to the market. With the tegus and iguanas, they are very big lizards. So they do require a big amount of space to be able to keep them properly. Not everyone can be able to provide that space for them, limiting their market. For example, with a crested gecko, you could have just a little space on a shelf, you could keep a crested gecko. So that market for them is a lot bigger. So that's something very important to keep in mind before making any large investments into any of these animals. So one of the worst reptile investments you can make are going to be wild caught chameleons. Now chameleons are very fragile as is. So getting wild caught chameleons, you really need to be an expert with the chameleons to make it worth it. Honestly, it's not something I would recommend and it is a very, very hard to compete with wild caught prices when they get imported in the hundreds. That's not to say people shouldn't be breeding them because I do think, as even though I'm referring to it as an investment, I do have a fascination for these animals. And I do think there are certain people that maybe they're not looking to make a living out of these animals, but they do want to establish healthy captive bred populations of these animals. Keep in mind that there's investment, but there's also just the hobby and the passion for the animals. If we're talking plain investments, if you're talking growing a business, wild caught chameleons are not going to be the best thing for, for doing that. Now another reason why chameleons are not the best long-term investment is because a lot of these animals, once you start to produce a couple generations in captivity, they start to get weaker and their, their fertility isn't the best. So you're always gonna need that new blood from those wild caught animals. That's just not a really good long-term plan because in case like, for example, Jackson's chameleons, if they seize all exportation out of Kenya, then you're really gonna be left with only a few animals and in the next couple of years, you know, they really need a lot of diversity from what we understand right now. That could be how the, the chameleon market crashes really quickly. One of the best and worst investments you can make is wild caught animals. This guy here is a Euromastix. These are one of the better investments you can make in wild caught animals because there is always a market for these guys. There's always people looking for captive bred animals and there's not enough supply to meet the demand. These guys are also a very hardy animal. So now it's very important when you're gonna start working with wild caught animal to know the individual species. Some are hardier, some are more prone to problems and some honestly just don't do as well. So it's very important to keep that in mind. If you're a beginner in the reptile industry, I don't recommend working with wild caught animal. These guys can sometimes come in with illnesses, diseases, parasites. So it is very important for a more experienced person to work with these guys. There's little signs that you know you can look for to make sure the animal is healthy or does good. Your experience level is really gonna dictate the amount of success you're gonna have with wild caught animals. There's little things when these guys get imported you gotta look out for, make sure they're hydrated, make sure they're doing well, make sure they're healthy. And uh, if you do all that correctly, and usually that comes with the years of experience, you can actually reproduce these guys in captivity. This guy right here, for example, he's bred many, many times throughout his years. He got imported about 
10 years ago. And then Philip Leeds, a good friend of ours, he's actually produced tons and tons of babies with this guy. We actually bred this guy last year as well. A lot of people don't like to work with some of these imported animals that get imported by large quantities because it is hard to compete with captive bred prices versus wild caught prices of animals. Usually the wild caught animals are gonna be a lot cheaper. So that deters a lot of people from wanting to work with them. But it is very important to work with them. So we do have established breeding populations in the United States and that's gonna help alleviate the demand of the import of the animals. Even though right now some of these animals might be imported by the hundreds or thousands every year, that doesn't mean it's going to stay like that forever. At any moment, they could just ban all Euromastics from being imported or exported from their country, and now all we have left is what we already have in this country. It's very important to have established breeding colonies and populations of these guys. Now I hate to say this, but one of the worst gecko investments you can make right now are crested geckos. Now of course there's a caveat to that, right? Certain morphs are going to be coming down in price, certain morphs are going to be going up in price. Morphs like the Lily White, for example, have been out for a couple years. They're in an incomplete dominant gene, so they're easy to reproduce. So the price has actually started to drop on those. An animal like that is probably a good time to get into because the price isn't as high as it was when they first came out. Now, animals like the Cappuccinos or even the new Sables, they may not be the best time to invest in them right now because of how high they are. A Sable, for example, is a, you know, a $20,000 gecko right now, and it is an incomplete dominance. There's an advantage to be, being early in the gene because you can, you can produce a, a good amount and get your money back quick. But if you're not one of the very first people that hop into that gene when it's that high, then you're probably not going to make your money back as quick. I'm sure eventually you will make your money back because, you know, crested geckos are very popular. They're a very, you know, intriguing pet and it's easy to sell them, especially people who are looking to invest in them. But, you know, you always have to keep in mind that the worst time to invest in an animal is when it is at its peak of value. When everybody's talking about it, when everybody thinks is when it's buzzing so much, as good as that is for the animal and the hobby, it's probably not the best time to put money into it. When the animals are, you know, nobody's talking about them as much, but they still have a lot of potential, that's when you want to invest in an animal. Animals like uh, Super Dalmatians were high for a long time. Now they're starting to regulate. So it just depends on what morph. It's very, you know, nuanced and it depends on, on each little trait and even the species as a whole. But crested geckos are something that even adult geckos right now are really high. Unless you find some really good deals, you probably want to stay away from investing in them. One of the best reptile investments you can make right now is blue tongue skinks. Specifically the Australian Northern variety, the Northern blue tongue skinks. Why? Because right now they're on a low. A couple years ago, even as early as three years ago, we would sell normal blue tongue skinks at $450 to $500 easy. Right now, we're selling them for anywhere from like $250 to $300. So they are on a low, but at the same time, there's some new mutations starting to come out, like the ivory becoming much more available now. And when there are new mutations to these animals, prices do tend to go up once you start making new varieties of the new mut mutations and stuff like that. So it is right now the best time to invest in blue tongue skinks. So this right here is a classic Northern blue tongue skink. And like I said, we used to sell these guys for $450. Right now, you can find something like this for $250, $300 easy. There's a lot of them available right now, so that's what I'm saying. It is a really good time to invest in them because though it is low right now, it is eventually going to go back up. And especially, like I said, with the new mutations coming out, mixing them, making a nice variety of them. So this right here is a Swedish line Northern. Something like with this much color, this richness, we would actually sell before for $1,000 easy. Right now, you can get one of these for $600 off our website. Great investment, great opportunity, because these guys are absolutely incredible animals. They're also gonna live a very long time. Blue tongues live 20, 30 years. So this is something we're really excited to show you guys. These are our ivories, they're getting a bit bigger. And as you can see, there's already variation in them right now. You can see the one on my right hand is more solid white, while the one on my left is more like of a pinkish, light orange coloration throughout his body. And this is even with much outcrossing. So the possibilities are endless. That's why it is a great time to hop in the blue tongue skink bandwagon.
All right guys, so there is a huge difference between business and investments and pets. We, for example, have a lot of animals, a lot of pets that we really don't make much money or any money at all, but we just have them because we do enjoy those animals and they're special projects to us. But if you wanna run a business, especially when it's what puts food on your table, it's very important to look at the business side. Yeah, and there's certainly a novelty in breeding certain species that nobody works with and that are not as popular or are not gonna blow up just because of the passion of the hobby. And most people are gonna fall into that category and that's the backbone of this whole industry are those people that breed just for passion or it's just their side hustle or whatever the case may be. And that's how I think everybody, every one of us start, but some of us decide that this is the only thing we wanna do, so it's a little different. You gotta keep that in mind, you know? There is passion, there is, you know, that thing that keeps the hobby alive, and then there's also the people like us that are trying to make a living and put food on our table through this hobby with our animals.